Welcome to the Language of the Prophet series. Today we'll be covering the first Aliyah from Torah portion Matot. Alright, let's get started. So we're on the first Aliyah. You all see my screen? Okay, yes. Uh, let me know if you don't see the screen. I'll assume you can see it. Okay, we've got, uh, okay, eight students. And, although I think Fidel and Jane, I think there's two usually on that account, right? So we're pretty close. We're almost at our minion. I know, I know we'll make it. Let's, let's do this. Okay, so the first aliyah of Torah portion Matot can be found in Numbers chapter 30, verse 2 through 17. And just a reminder, this is an open microphone class, so feel free to speak up, ask questions, anything about the grammar you want to know, and we will uh, we'll see how far we can get. Here we are, starting with verse 2. Who would like to read the first verse to me? And there we have our minion, Yofi. Rabbi, yes, go for it, Tom. I, I, I'm going to read first. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. By by Daber, by Daber Moshe El, Raish. Rashi. Raish Hama Ham Moshe Hama Hamatot Li 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 Bib. Uh, Lib, Lib, Libnei, Libnei Israel, Lem, Lemor, Ze, Hadabar, Hadabar, Asher, Chi, Chi, Chiyab, Chiyah, 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 Chiba, yeah, Chiba, Chiba, Adonai. Oh, that's good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Just that verse. And uh, uh, it's just to comment on one thing, I noticed that some of my Filipino students do this, and this is a lot of um, Mexican Jews do the same thing. They when they see tzadi here, they pronounce it like a ch sometimes, ch, ch. But we don't have ch in Hebrew, right? Oh, we don't have we don't have that sound. <laughs> so remember, it's like ts. No. S, s. S. Chiba, yeah, no, s. Chiba. Siva, Siva. It must be the Spanish influence Chiba. on your language, I think. Maybe that's what it is. Because why would it be the same with Mexican Jews and those in Philippines? <laughs> so I think it's got to be there's something about the Spanish influence. <laughs> so, and also, you know, you, you guys know, you guys know, uh, when someone has the name Jesus in Espanol, you know what the nickname is? The nickname. Like if you have a friend and his name is Jesus, like Jesus, you know what his nickname is? Just, yeah, yeah, that's Chewy, right. Chewy, <laughs> <laughs> Chewy is the nickname. I don't know how that comes to Jesus, but anyway, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's all kind of translate together. So what do you have here? By the Bel Moshe, what's that? Everybody can join in. Anybody? By the Bel Moshe. Adonai spoke. Almost, Moshe, Moshe. Moshe spoke. Good. The Rashi Hamatot. The men of the tribe, the chief of the tribe. The what? Oh yeah, chiefs. That's good. Yeah, chiefs. Chiefs is a good translation. The chief of the, chief of the tribe. Yeah. And look, notice we have a construct chain here, right? Rashi Hamatot. And everybody noticed she correctly knew to say the chiefs of the tribes because of our hey. Right, we have the definite article right here. So the last word has the article. So she knew that that transfers to the whole chain, right? So because there's a ha here, there's a the here, she correctly translated the whole thing as the chiefs of the tribes. All right, okay. And then let's leave me Israel. Thank <laughs> you. 
to the sons of Israel. Yeah, good, good. To the children of Israel, the sons of Israel. Lamor. So we have an infinitive construct. The best way to translate this in English, uh, I'm going to hit mute all just for a sec because there's some background noise on one of your microphones. But feel free to unmute and talk. Lamor, we usually just translate saying, right? But it also means to say, right? But that just doesn't work so well in English. So here we have in quotations what Moshe said. Okay, what's that mean? And by the way, I've asked the more advanced students. You notice they're kind of being silent. They're giving you guys a chance, right? It's not that they don't know. They know. <laughs> they know. They're just uh, giving you guys a shot, right? So uh, I'll call on them if, if uh, the, you guys, the intermediate guys have some issues, okay? So, Zehadava, what's that mean? Zehadava. This is the word which Adonai commanded. Beautiful. Very good. Very good. This is the word. And notice, Naomi, she knew we have to say is right here. Well, ah, sorry. <laughs> I still haven't figured out how to. I'm not sure that there's a solution to this. <laughs> but there's, a, there's the word is here because when the adjective comes before the noun, and in this case, it's a demonstrative adjective, right? Remember your demonstrative adjectives? This, if it's close. That, if it's far. These, if it's plural, close. Those, if it's far, right? Plural. And so, when the, usually we say noun followed by adjective, right? So, if it said, hadavar hazeh, that would mean this word. But notice what else is happening here. Hadavar has the definite article, right? Ze does not. It does not agree in definiteness. We would have expected to have a nice hey with a dagesh in there if it was simply modifying the hadava, right? Because sometimes you can reverse the word order for special emphasis, right? But we know that's definitely not the case here because they are not in agreement on definiteness, right? It's not haze, it's just ze. So correctly translated by Naomi, this is the word asher, relative pronoun, which siva adonai. And of course, you guys remember, we have verb first, followed by subject is the normal order. Whenever we swap the order in Biblical Hebrew, it almost always implies some kind of emphasis, right? But there's no swapping here, so we don't need any special emphasis. That just means they understand, they were expecting it to be from Adonai, okay? All right, verse number three, someone please read this verse. Rabbi. Go for it. Oh, you just read. Rabbi, can I? Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, question again. Yeah, what's your question? In, in verse yeah. two, in verse two is uh, by the bear, that, that by by is that uh, prefix? Can you explain oh, that? Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. In, in by sure, the bear. Sure. So here's what's happening. So the phrase, look at the very first word, guys. Yedabel, yedabel. This is the imperfect conjugation of pl okay. uh, verb from the root davar, right? Okay. So by itself, without the vav, mm -hmm. if there's no vav here, and again, you can't do this in modern Hebrew, only in biblical. So if you don't have the vav, if you don't have the vav here, then what that means is he is speaking with the idea that it's continuously going on, it's going on for a long time, right? It's it's in process, or or it means he will speak, right? He will speak, right? But when we add the vav there. Vav. I tried to change colors, it didn't obey me. <laughs> when we add the vav, that's the vav conversant. There's different grammatical terms for that. It's prefix of the Yeah. Prefix. Right, right. The conjunction oftentimes changes the meaning of the verb, right? So so here we get, and Moshe spoke. It's we. It converts this whole thing to a perfect. And perfect we usually translate as past. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then Moshe spoke, or and Moshe past. spoke. Yeah. yeah, that's what's going on there. Good question. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, thank you. Good. Thank you, Rabbi. Sure, sure. Yep, everybody feel free to jump in if you have any questions, right? We want to, this is part of the joy of getting to do it inductively, right? We're in the text. I don't expect you to know it all or to remember it all. So use it. This is, we're just working through it, yeah? All right. Um, verse three. Someone would like to read, please. Okay, I'll take it first. Go for it. Ish ki yidor neder 
לאל, לאדוני, או כשבר, שבועה, לאסור, לאסור, לאסור איסר, על נפשו לא יקל, דברו, בכל היושצי מפיו In the Torah, when we're looking at mitzvot, the word ish, instead of Adam, tells us that this is for a male. This commandment, ah, this commandment is specifically for men that we're talking about, okay? All right, so, tried to circle it and it went to the next page. It still doesn't want to. Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm just writing with the status on the screen and it's changing, it's changing to the next. Hmm. Oh, wait. Okay, fine. Pretend that you should circle. <laughs> okay, so specifically a man. Ki yidor neder. All right, so do you guys see what the uh, yidor is? Yidor. 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 What do you think that verb is? Okay, look at the word after it. Look at the noun that comes after it. Neder. Who knows what a neder is? Net vowel. That's right, a vowel, a vowel. So, not knowing this verb in front, I think someone's got it. Go ahead, jump. It's a verb. That's right. It's the verb form of the same noun, isn't it? Right? So, even though you haven't learned this verb yet, you can figure it out because the word that follows, the context, totally informs you. And you see the dagash and the dalit? What do you think that is? What do you think happened there? Dagash and the dalit. Yep, see, look here. We have a, you see where that yellow arrow is? Yeah, what do you think that's there for? What's that telling us? What happened? You don't read the duplication. The noon is noon. from there. It shows that the noon used to be there in the word. Very yeah. good. Very good. That's me. Amal. That's right. Amal makes a bow. That's right. Amal makes a bow. Good. Good. So the, this Amal so the Dalit, let me see if it'll let me write now. Let's try. Let's try. If I tell it here to allow writing. So, you're exactly right. So, the Dalit is there because there is a noon which has assimilated, right? In ancient Hebrew, the theoretical form would be Yindo. So, this is a Penyun verb. And you guys figured it out and figured out what the verb means, even though this is not your vocabulary, because of the context, the proximity of the noun, Nede, about. So, so, Ki, this is kind of a, a sneaky beast in Hebrew syntax. You guys know the basic meaning that or because, right? But key can mean a whole lot more. Key can mean if, syntactically. But if you say key in, it says if, but it's but it's expecting a negative answer, right? So if it didn't happen, right? Um, the key can sometimes mean when. And we find very often in Hebrew poetry, key means this. Exclamation point in the middle of the sentence, right? We call it the emphatic key. And there's some other situations in sense syntax, so <coughs> we'll just have to deal with them as we as we come across them. You have to be a little flexible with key. Alright, so each key you don't add here, this is showing us there's in Greek this would be expressed with the subjunctive in the verb, right? So if this happens, it might happen. Right? So anyway, so this is saying if a man, you don't add there, if he show vow a vow, la donai, you guys know that, to la donai. Oh, what does O mean? Oh, or, good. Or, or he shava shavua. Yeah, this is a bit harder because you guys haven't had this word. But does anybody know offhand what shavua means? Shavua. It's another noun. This is a noun. Shavua. Yes. Yes. Oh, very good. Oh. Can it be possible to swear? Swear. That's right. That's what the verb means. He shava. Shavua. Exactly. Very good. Very good. So look, see, when you guys know a word here and a word there, 
it already, being in the text, you're already able to work through it. If you just be disciplined, don't let yourself look at the English Bible, right? you got to resist the temptation to look, right? Because what we're doing in this process, it's more than just getting immersed. It's more than just doing the grammar, right, and all this stuff. Really, what we are doing is we're breaking you of the habit of running to a translation, right? When really you already have a lot of the tools that a lot of times sure. you can work it out yourself, right? Because it's a habit right now, just like training wheels on a bicycle for a kid, right? The, and the habit is to go to the translation, right? But I'm hoping you won't do this. Like in, in, in the mm -hmm. States with my Hebrew students, I didn't let them uh, for sure know in, in, no interlinear Bibles. No, no, no. You don't want that. And parallel, I tried to get them just to get Hebrew. Right. But back then we didn't have the reader stuff. Right. You know, so we didn't have those tools available. But now, you know, we, we've got this tool. So this will be OK. Good. It's clear. Everybody says it's clear. Hallelujah. OK. Moving right along. Great. More people join. Hallelujah. So let's see who would like to. OK. So he uh, This is a bit harder to recognize. OK. This is the Nifal. Nifal Binyan. Nifal. Oh, I think you doing that to me. I'm starting to wonder if the benefit of being able to write on the screen is outweighed by continuing to try to change to the next, <laughs> you know, to the next, the next, yeah. And anyway, so, to swear an oath, he shall va shavua, and of course you can see the noun comes from the verb, and uh, th this is a nifal, and he's your friend that we talked about last time. He's an infinitive absolute. Let me write on the screen. Come on. Nifal. There we go. Infinitive. So if he indeed swears a Shibwa, Le So Isa. This is a bit harder. Does anybody know what the verb Asa means? Asa? Shabine. Yeah, that's right. To bind. So here we have an infinitive, a normal one, infinitive construct. To bind. And to bind to what? An isa. So you'll notice the text, this is intentional. The text is using the verbal forms that relate to the nouns that are driving. Yi do nedel, hi shava shabua, leso isa. And this is one of those things where in the English, you might not lose a whole lot of the definition. But we certainly lose the feeling of the text, right? Like, we would say swear an oath. We wouldn't say to oath an oath, right? Uh, we wouldn't say to bind a binding or to bind a deprivation, uh, uh, a privation is really what it is like. Like, uh, an Esau is a promise that you make when uh, you to deny yourself of something, usually. It doesn't always mean that. It can mean the same thing as oath. But usually it has to do with denying yourself food, denying yourself whatever, something you like. So... So let's back up. So if a man, ishki, or a man, if he should, again like subjunctive, you don't either, vow a vow, pravamai, or swear an oath to bind a privation. Privation means like not allowing yourself to have something, right? Al nafsho, on his nefesh. What's nefesh mean? Soul. Yeah, literally means soul. But usually we're talking about depriving. Uh, in this context, I would probably say on his life, right? Or uh, something like this. So like you're depriving yourself of food. It kind of sounds weird to say depriving your soul, right? It's really hard to bring it into English, exactly the meaning. Remember, nefesh can mean life force, right? It's like the, the stuff that makes your cells move, right? It's a mystery. In science, you know, and I enjoy science. I think it's done great things you know we we live in a very comfortable world now because of science but uh science has no clue what makes it so that the, the cytoplasm and the cells can move right you know we, we understand what cells are we understand what dna is doing we understand all these great complexities of god's creation but we do not know how they move that's the nefesh the nefesh is the life force it's the, the and the nefesh dies when we die, the nefesh dies, right? And we receive a new nefesh when we're resurrected, okay? But it also means other things too, right? You guys are familiar? It means neck and throat, these other things that are related to life, right? 
Uh, it can mean a corpse, remember, in the priestly literature when we're talking about don't touch a nephesh. If you find it in the field, right, the nephesh of a person. Anyway, it's very vibrant in its, its different meanings. So the idea is depriving yourself of something, right? So depriving oneself of something, you could even say that as a dynamic translation. Lo yachel devaro. Okay, what do you guys, does anybody recognize yachel? What that means? Yachel. What's that? Yachel. Profane. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's profane. Profane. Well, and, and notice, oh, hold on. It, uh, yeah, if you're going to speak, guys, make sure that it's not on speakerphone mode, okay? Because then what happens, it's the noise, the white noise cycles uh, in redundancy. It'll go, ding, 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 like, it'll keep repeating, yeah? Okay, so try to use a microphone, or maybe just lower the volume when you talk. That'll work too. So, that's right. So, he, so notice it doesn't say al. It's, oh, sorry, I was pointing on the other screen. It doesn't say al, it says lo. Lo. So the idea is, remember we mentioned before, lo is a very strong knot. It's like a never knot. Versus al, which is a softer way to make the request, right? Al. So lo, yachel, let him not profane, or he shall not profane. This is actually a he feel form of the verb. And it's okay if you didn't recognize it. But I just want to point something out here for those of you who would like to know how to recognize that this is a he feel. Okay, notice... Over here, the the chzere. See the chzere? What has happened is usually in Hefil we would expect a long chiric, wouldn't we? So in the Hefil imperfect, we would expect to have a yod inserted before the third root letter, and there'd be a chiric here. It would be a long chiric, right? like that. That's what we would expect. But in some verbs, in some instances, instances. Uh, usually in the uh, Joseph force, and also in just some other instances, what happens is we lose the yod, and instead we lengthen the hiric to a longer vowel. If it helps, you can think of it as the yod. He's like animated. He moves down and joins the yod, right? <laughs> I mean the hiric. It makes it into a long seri. That helps to recognize, okay? And we also have the patach, here, which it's not only for Hefil forms, but we do see it in Hefil. That's something that I remember Dr. Vera noticed several months back when we were discussing Hefil. Okay? Good. Nice. No more? Devaro. What's Devaro? His word. His word, right? So, of course, you guys recognize your phenomenal suffix by now. I'm not going to point it out as much anymore, okay? Because you should, you should know these. His dava, right? One thing that I will point out for some of you that are right on top of everything, in case you want to know a little bit more what's happening here, the reason why it's devaro and not davaro, who can tell me why it's devaro and not davaro? Because davar, right? Davar, pardon me. Bitonic comments. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yomar got it. This was what we call a pre tonic comments, okay? So. What I mean by that is, in the word devar, and this this is universal. This happens. I mean, this happens with the Hebrew language. Okay, I'm just gonna say whatever the rest of it here. If we have a comet here, and as Yomar said, it's pre-tonic, meaning it's before the tone, pre-tone. It's not davar. It's davar, right? Davar. And so, since it's davar, what happens is when we put on the suffix here. The tone is no longer here. It moves. Do, 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 do. Because in Hebrew, the opposite of English, Hebrew wants usually to have the accent on the last syllable of the word or of a construct chain. Right? It wants to be at the end, usually. 85%-ish, like that. And so here you can see, look, here is our etnachta accent mark showing us that the accent has indeed moved away from bait. He's down here now. And so since he moved, the rule is, whenever you have a word with a, and by, you guys don't have to know this, it's just those who want to, extra info, whenever you have a word with a pre-tonic comments, and you add something to the word to make the word bigger, the accent will move to the ends, 
and that comment becomes shortened to a vocal schwa. Okay, that's the rule. So this guy became that guy. Okay, that's why it's done all. It's predictable. This almost always happens. Okay, so not just with this word, with all kinds of words. Okay, so let's continue. So let him not profane. But, but yes, please, please. Me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, teacher, uh, together with my class. I'm so sorry. I'm not aware because I have another one student, one of your students here. She's from, from Bereshit also. I'm, to, I'm with, right now with fine. her. I was not aware that she's, ha I'm not aware she's having a speaker until we only heard the, the feedback. We're very sorry about that. She's what? She's what? She's, she's, she's using another mic. Um, she's, she's, at that, she's in that corner. She's using a microphone you're not aware of the feedback ah, no sorry, problem no that. problem it's fine it's fine it's fine yeah don't don't worry about that it's fine it's fine yeah it's, it happens you know everybody forgets and you know online is it's 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 not so natural to be meeting like this right like usually we'd meet in the classroom and have a whiteboard behind me you know i could engage you with my arms and hand motion moving around and you know so that's fine we, we do what we can with the online stuff don't worry about it thanks no problem okay so his word Okay, so what is this? Kehol, kehol. Anybody? Kehol. In all. Almost, almost, right? As yeah, all. you're right. Literally, it's as all, right? As all. According to all. Yeah, that's right. As, as all. all, as all, right? Okay. And this actually is kind of idiomatic. Uh, the way we usually translate this into English is according to all, right? And it almost always shows up in mitzvah formulas, right? So so and so did everything that the lord commanded right something like that okay so so according in this case according to all say what's the verb mean say it's a the pipe yeah the, means yeah yeah that's right left the mouth yes yeah that's right everything which yatsa goes out right like to go out of egypt right so this is what what's this verbal form here guys what's the verbal form is it perfect? Participle. Active participle. Yes, very good. Active participle. Nice. Nice. So this one doesn't express time, does it? We have to infer the correct time in English. Don't make the mistake that students of modern Hebrew make. And many Israelis, they, they think that this just means present tense, right? But Tanakh, it does not. Okay? So let's see, we got to look back. Okay, so this is expressing a conditional if he vows a vowel. Okay, then according to all, ha. What is up with the ha? What does this tell me when I put a ha? Let's uh, intermediate guys first, okay? Uh, Yomar, Dr. Barry, give everybody this a chance just for a sec. Okay, what's the ha doing there? What does that mean? Do you guys remember? The one doing the action. Yeah. The, the verb became an action. Very good. Very, a person. Yes, very good. So it's basically the equivalent of... If I could have done the same thing without the ha, I could have written asher, right? Asher, right? This definite, yes, definite rabbi. Yes, it's definite, right? So it's something like the one, definite the, now, one, the, definite the one coming out, right? Or that which comes out, right? The ha in front of an active participle can represent asher. When we get to the prophets, studying the prophets in later biblical Hebrew, there's another, there's another prefix we can use instead to represent this and that's she she there's a prefix she so if you see that or you'll see it in a bracha maybe a blessing right you don't have to be confused that's supposed to be a schwa there she we can put she in front of a word and that means asher but in the torah we don't have that available yet in this form of hebrew we just have ha to do that okay or we could say asher so kechol asher yotze according to all which right asher which Comes out or will come out. Me peeve. What's me peeve, guys? From the mouth. Okay, good. So, so the mem is from, right? And of course, we know that this is mean, right? Mean. And that noon, that's the dagesh inside, right? Because the noon contracted, right? Like in English, cannot becomes can't. This is how we do it in Hebrew. The n in this case, just like it disappears in English, it also disappears. In Hebrew, but it doubles that letter. Okay. And then, very good. You guys recognize the suffix? His mouth. From his mouth. So, according to everything which comes out of his mouth, from his mouth, 
Yeah, I say, what's the I say mean? He shall do. He shall do. Exactly. Very good, very good, very good. And uh, let me see. I think I had a comment I wanted to. So Ibn Ezra, he comments that this is directed to the the Rashe, right? The heads or the chiefs, as you translated before, guys, of the Bene Israel of the tribes. Ibn Ezra says that in his opinion, in my opinion, this part really took place, it happened uh, after the battle with Midian in chapter 31. So he's saying it's kind of out of place here a little bit. It's not chronological. And then he gives another example like this to show when something's not chronological, back in chapter 11, verse 35. So the Gadites, they came up to Moshe and they said um, what they said after Moshe gave um, commandments concerning them to Eliezer, the Kohen, Yehoshua, son of Nun, and the family heads of the Bnei Israel, chapter 32, 28. Since Moshe told the Gadites and the Reubenites, do what you have promised, it is natural that in our chapter, which is placed subsequently, to be told that these same heads of tribes, quote, if a man makes a vow to Hashem, he must do all of which has come out of his lips, out of his mouth. But our verse does not say the heads of the Israelite tribes. It really says, Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes, leave me Israel for the Bene Israel, that they should tell these things to the Bene Israel. So it's kind of like, here's an instruction to tell everybody else, right? So that's that's what's happening. He's saying it's not specifically just for the chieftains, and he's saying that this is out of sequence with what comes next. So remember, if anybody ever gives you a hard time about the order of things in the Torah, the Torah is not always chronological. It doesn't have to be. Nothing says that to be. Just because that's how stories are told today, we don't say that it has to be in that order in the Torah this year, okay? So let's continue on then. Verse. So you're right. Yeah, I say that's imperfect. Good. If you'd like to contribute to the work we do here, please go to www.patreon.com/slash Hebrew Literacy and become a patron. Tada Rabbah.